Between the time when the ocean drank Hyrule and the rise of the Tomb Raider, there was an age undreamed of. And onto this, Yuji, destined to wear the jewel crown of video games upon a troubled brow. It is I, his black cat, who alone can tell thee of his saga. Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. In the early 90s, Sega became a real competitor to Nintendo. Remember those whole Sega does what Nintendo commercials? Well, for many people, that was an absolute real statement. Now, I admit, I was Team Nintendo all the way. But later on live, I had the opportunity to enjoy playing the old Sega Genesis franchises. To my delight, many of them have stood the test of time. Now, obvious ones include Sonic the Hedgehog, Streets of Rage, and even Nights into Dreams. These are games that we've all covered during our time here on YouTube. But there's another one that has captured my interest, and that would be the Golden Axe games. Now, the first Golden Axe debuted in the arcades during the 1980s, but was ported to the Sega Genesis. It was followed by Golden Axe 2 on the Sega Genesis, and it was followed by a game called Golden Axe The Revenge of Death Adder, which was exclusive to the arcades, so it will not be talked about in this video. Then shortly after there was Golden Axe 3, which did come out for consoles. So I'll be focusing on those three Golden Axe games that came out for the Sega Genesis during that time. This is a series that focuses on sword and sorcery, where heroes and heroines who look like they stepped out of a Frank Frazetta painting do battle against evil hordes of unnatural creatures in order to behead a destructive ruler and free a fantasy land from bondage. Well, that sounds like a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Let's check out Golden Axe. Golden Axe is a hack and slash game that was the brainchild of the creator of Altered Beast, Makado Uchiha. Hmm, Altered Beast. Maybe we'll check that out someday. In the high fantasy world of Yuria, I think that's how you say it, three brave warriors took it upon themselves to free their homeland from the evil clutches of Death Adder. Now that's a name. Death Adder yields the Golden Axe, the magical emblem of the land. Your heroes of choice include a barbarian named Axe Battler, an Amazon named Tyrus Flare, and a dwarf named Gillis Thunderhead. Oh, and uh, for the record, Axe Battler fights with a sword, and Gillis fights with an axe. Okay. All three are out for revengeance, as Death Adder killed Axe's mom, both of Tyrus's parents, and Gillis' twin brother. After one of the best selection screens ever, you begin your trek through the wastelands of the conquered Yuria, which includes flying on the back of a giant turtle. Well, that's nice. After raiding the castle and defeating Death Adder, the released king and princess of Yulia reveal that the true final boss, Deathbringer, who was Death Adder's mentor, I guess that made him a death understudy or something, after feeding him, we recover the magic golden axe and are awarded with immortality. All a day's work. As far as the gameplay goes, you battle an array of henchmen and henchwomen unleashed by Death Adder. To combat them, you have your handheld weapon, your jump, sprint, and best of all, magic attacks. Now these are fun. You collect magic potions by kicking these little sprites. Come here, you jerk. When you do so, your magic bars increase. When you activate them, they act as a screen nuke that can do various amounts of damage to your enemies. You can also get these potions in between levels. The three warriors each yield different types of spells, from earth, lightning, and fire. Now I really enjoyed these mighty steeds that you can take over. When a henchman comes riding in on one, you have the ability to knock them off it. And when you do, you can take the steed over. When you're on this beast, you can unleash tail whips and even do fire blasts at your enemy. This is the kind of stuff that really makes this game stand out from other beat-em-up adventures. Well, that and this. This game, hands down, has one of the best death screams ever. I mean, it just sounds so brutal. When you swing your sword, or axe, you can actually perform a combo and lock your opponent down, which is pretty cool. But keep in mind that that same thing can also happen to you as well. 
That's one thing I have to say about Golden Axe. It is hard. It does not start off too rough, but the further you go, the more punishing it gets, especially for one player. It almost demands that you have a friend come along with you. While I find the dashing attack very effective, I often refer to just jump attacks. Now, it does take longer to take down enemies, but at least it keeps them off me. While you do have continues and you do get more health from these green sprites, this game can be pretty unforgiving, like any good early 90s beat-em-up. The graphics and music are top quality for the 16-bit Sega Genesis. Now, the Sega tended to have darker graphics than the Super Nintendo, but that actually kind of works here. It really captures the feeling of the game, which is so clearly inspired by Conan the Barbarian, with the half-naked heroes and heroines slicing and dicing enemies with their muscles bulging out. Now let's hear that scream some more. Now that's the sugar that daddy likes. Now let's get to Golden Axe 2. This game was a console exclusive and served as the direct sequel to the first game. The three heroes from the first adventure all return, this time, they battle a new evil lord called Dark Gold, who has taken the Golden Axe into his possession. You know, they really should just take that thing and just bury it in a vault somewhere. The basics are all here, but there are some tweaks to the graphics and gameplay. Here you can throw enemies in multiple directions, which is very helpful. Oh, and I forgot to mention that in the first game, you couldn't do that. Well, you could throw enemies and such, but it's not as useful as it is in here. Well, anyway. The magic system received an upgrade as well. Now, depending on the number of bars you have, you can choose how many to use in different times to unleash different magic attacks at different levels. I really love the magic in this series. Now, they do stop the action for you to essentially watch a cinematic, so the game doesn't have the greatest flow when it comes to beat em ups, but it's still fun to watch. The Mighty Steeds return as well. As with this game, you will need all the help you can get because like the first one, the game eases you into it and then cranks up the difficulty. Running and jumping attacks are used quite often by bad guys, and these big brutes can go to hell. This game also features a dual mode as you battle enemies in arena where the challenge gets harder and it pretty much is what it sounds like. When it comes to Golden Axe 2, it's pretty much more of the same, but one way to look at it is that if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now let's check out those screams in this game. Oh, come on, that's so weak. Now, fun fact, Golden Axe 3 only saw a North American release on the Sega channel. Anyone remember that? Nope, me either. Anyway, another evil tyrant named Demond Hellstrike, the so-called Prince of Darkness, has taken the Golden Axe and put an evil curse on all the heroes. Well, all except for one, your chosen one that you decide to ride with. It is up to you to save the world. Lift the curse, and, and pretty much do what you were doing in the previous games. Here, however, you have an entirely new cast of characters to choose from, including a Black Panther named Kronos. Well, we gotta choose that character. Right, buddy? Yeah, so interested. While there are some upgrades from the original games, such as blocking, sweep attacks, and a refined grappling system, I still find the best way to play this game, for me personally, is the same way I've been playing the others. I do find the attacks to be slightly faster, but overall, it's more the same, with a fresh coat of paint. Mighty Steeds, Mischievous Sprites, and Magic Attacks are all back here as well. The new characters and their abilities do add a little more pizzazz to the gameplay. For example, I really enjoy playing as this big black cat. I mean, the speed is awesome. But like the previous game, the difficulty curve starts slow and then really cranks up, which has become par for the course at this point. So are the graphics and music as well. One difference here is that you can take different routes when you reach a fork in the road which is a nice touch. Honestly, when you get to the third game of the series, the gameplay may start to feel a little samey. At the end of the day, overall, Golden Axe 3 feels very similar to the first two games. Nothing better, and nothing worse. The final thoughts I have on the series is that I find all three games enjoyable in their own way. They are difficult and challenging. The settings, the character designs, and the magic powers do make Golden Axe stand out from other brawlers. Not to mention the whole sword and sorcery outlay will always attract fans of that genre. Honestly, the Golden Axe series is probably the best Conan video games ever made. You know, Paramount Pictures better realize that they're sitting on a gold mine here. There are other Sega games other than Sonic the Hedgehog that would make good movie franchises, and Golden Axe is one of them. So if you have a chance, make sure to check them out. 
if you're down for that retro challenge with swords and axes and such. Anyway, I am Eugene Morris of the Brotherhood of Gaming. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Until then, keep on gaming.